Shaky footage is a pain to deal with, believe me, but this is how you fix it in Shotcut. Now to fix your shaky footage, we'll be using the stabilized filter. First things first, we have to open up Shotcut and make sure you have the latest version because for some reason, some versions of Shotcut do not have this filter. So double check to make sure. After that, make sure you have your GPU processing disabled. All you need to do is go to the top of the bar, go to settings and make sure that this GPU effects option for my Mac users or GPU processing option for my Windows users is unticked and disabled. And the reason that we do this is because if this GPU setting is enabled, the stabilized filter will not show up for you. So make sure it's disabled. Now that we got that out of the way, you can now import your footage and set it on the timeline. From there, identify where the shakiness begins and split it from the rest of the clip. By splitting the footage and only isolating the shaky portion, you will significantly cut down the analyzing time that this filter will take. Now, if your whole video has some shakiness and unstableness, well, I guess you just have to deal with the longer processing and analyzing time. Next is applying the actual filter. But before you do that, make sure that the clip is selected in the timeline. If it's not, then you guessed it, the stabilized filter is not going to show up for you. Once it's selected, go to filters, click on the plus button and go to the video tab. In the search bar on top, type in stabilize and choose the stabilize filter. Then it should automatically be added. Now this tip is actually really important because without it, I can guarantee you that you won't be able to step up your video editing game. To do that, all you have to do is use Motion Ray as your one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. Now I'm sorry for misleading you, but I'm being for real. They helped me step up my game and I know that they can help you guys too. They actually contain a large array of premium quality templates, stock videos, music, anything that you can download to help you make better and faster videos much more easier. All you have to do is make an account with them and you will have access to all the free assets they have available. Each template also comes with a tutorial just in case if you need some help. You can also try one of many subscription plans that Motion Array offers. You can cancel anytime and all your assets will still be covered. So if you want to try it out, you can use my link in the description and try it out for free. But if you decide to register for any type of subscription, you'll be making yourself a favor and you'll be helping out the channel. So thank you. Now you can see all the settings for the stabilized filter. And this is where it can get a little bit complicated. You see, out of all the videos I watched and all the resources I've been able to gather, there seems to be some sort of disagreement on how this filter should be used and what the best settings are. From my understanding, the stabilizer filter works best for videos that have minimal shaking. For example, if you're hand holding your camera. But this effect doesn't work really well for videos that are just extremely shaky. And you'll see what I'm talking about later. And based on what I'm reading here, it's also recommended that you use short clips instead of long longer ones, but if the whole clip is shaky, then you really don't have any other option but to do so. And this is usually recommended because of the larger file sizes as well as the analyzing times. But to be honest, that's not really a huge problem. And another thing for best practice is actually exporting the clip once the effect is done and using this exported clip on your main project or edit. This is usually done because it will minimize the lag that you're experiencing while you're editing for your main project, since this is a really heavy effect that puts a lot of stress when you're editing live. But the main problem I'm seeing with this filter, it's the settings itself. There's a lot of argumenting because there's some people that think certain settings are better than others, when in reality, it really depends on the quality of your footage and how shaky it is. You can actually find several videos where they test certain settings for these filters and you can see the results for yourself. And I can even share the settings that I use for myself, which I am going to do later on, but at the end of it, it just depends on your footage. With that said, here are all the filters. We're gonna start with the shakiness and accuracy filters, which directly impact the analyzing step. Then we have the zoom and smoothing filters, which alter the image framing. Now you want to use the shakiness filter when of course there's some subtle shaking in the video obviously. And the accuracy filter just really determines the main point of reference when it's analyzing. The zoom filter is exactly what you think it is. Sometimes the framing of the video is completely out of place due to how much the video is altered when you start analyzing to a point where zooming in can actually help you. Now the smoothing filter refers to the moving of the frames allowed from the center to stabilize the video. And basically what that means is that this filter blends and modifies the frames in order to create that stabilizing effect. Now this 
this is just a quick explanation, but actually all the credit goes to this user I found on the shotgun forums that does an amazing job explaining their findings after they did some testing stuff that would take me forever to do. So I will link the post down below and all credit goes to this person. And all that's left for me is to test each one of these settings to see which one gives me the best result on stabilizing my footage. All right, so as you can see, I literally just adjusted each filter and now I'm ready to analyze. And all you have to do is just click the analyze button. For my Windows users, a window should then appear asking where you want to keep the analysis file and you can save it wherever. Then the jobs window should appear for everyone and start analyzing the video. Once it's done, we can press play and view it. Now, if you want a before and after, you can disable the effect by going to the filter window and unticking this box near the stabilize filter and it should revert back to its original state and you can compare a before and after. By the way, if the footage is super shaky, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to stabilize it in the edit. Now, if you're happy with the result, you can export it and now it's ready to be used in your main project. But if you're not really happy with it, you can adjust the settings until you like it. And it's as simple as that. The most complicated part is actually finding the right settings. But after that is just smooth sailing. Now, if you want to learn how to motion track objects in Shotcut, I have the video just for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.